Morning world, it's Thursday, it's the 29th of, of August 2019. It's about 11 a.m. in the morning, 11.30 a.m. UK time. Um, I could spend time talking about the global forecast for the coming month, but I'm going to do that tomorrow. I could spend time talking about the absolutely despicable and outrageous behaviour that's happening in British politics. But I'm going to save my fuel on this one because when I do this I'm going to do it properly and I'm going to eviscerate one or two people astrologically. More on that one later. Instead, let's look at something a bit different. The one of the overriding dominating aspects over 2019 has been slipping below the radar. There's so much other stuff going on. There's the build up to Saturn Pluto. There's Uranus knocking seven shades of various bits and pieces out of lots of people in early Taurus. Saturn's been hammering a lot of people in mid Capricorn. Underneath the radar, there's been a Jupiter-Neptune square for the last eight months. And this is coming to a conclusion in mid-September. I was all set to do September's forecast and I looked and I thought, oh, Jupiter's Neptune conclude, Jupiter-Neptune's concluding, better do a video on that. And particularly at this time, because Jupiter is currently in its own sign of Sagittarius and Neptune is in its own sign of Pisces. So they're both unusually strong at the moment. Now Jupiter's a gas giant. It gives out two to three times as much as heat and light as it takes in from the sun. You can't land on Jupiter. There's no surface, hence no substance. And um, Jupiter, because it's hot expanding gas, it tends to rule words like expansion and growth. But because it hasn't got substance, it promises more than it delivers. It always brings an element of fortune. But you can make your fortune, you can earn your fortune. Luck is random. Jupiter is not a lucky influence. It is a fortunate influence. Yes, it promises more than it delivers, but it always delivers something. The dictum of Jupiter, particularly in Sagittarius, is that quality beats quantity. Jupiter and Sagittarius is in its natural home. It can be expansive. It can be philosophical. It can expand people's ideas around truth, belief, philosophy, theology, dogma, religion. Neptune is also a gas giant, but it's a lot further from the sun, so its gas is very different to Jupiter. Whereas Jupiter's gas is expansive and billowing out, Neptune's gas is more, as far as I'm aware, methane... Uh, hydrogen and it and it kind of swirls around in clouds of bright blue with occasional wisps of white it is surrounded by this methane cloud that we can't really see underneath the cloud into what Neptune really looks like underneath which fits with its mysterious nature Neptune is on the negative side the illusory the vague the addictive the escapist and avoidist the neurotic, where people deal with the world as being the way they want it to be rather than dealing with it the way it really is. At the neutral level, of course, Neptune deals with things around celluloid, film, theatre, stage, music, art, ceramics, fashion, everything that denotes a kind of uh, artistic and aesthetic element into the world. And on the positive side, Neptune deals with illumination, enlightenment, spirituality. It is one's relationship with the divine, however we choose to experience divinity as being. With Neptune in Pisces, oil particularly is coming into the focus. I mean, plastic is made from oil and the plastic in the Neptunian seas has become a cause celebre in recent years. Neptune in Pisces is making us very aware of our responsibilities and our ignorance towards the environment. And to all those people who don't care and just drop litter on the streets, well, you're ignorant, folks. You're not intelligent. Neptune in Pisces is just... It's helping us cultivate a better, more aesthetic, 
empathic and intuitive relationship with not only the planet we live on, but with our own attitudes towards spirituality, divinity, compassion. But it's also creating an escapist and avoidist attitude towards exactly those same things. People are becoming less caring about the plight of others, less caring about the environment. And now Jupiter square Neptune. Jupiter and Neptune, of course, are equal and opposite. They're brothers in Greek mythology. When they split the firmament, Jupiter took the overworld, the material world, the, 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 the land world. Neptune took the water world in his guise as Poseidon. So they're equal and opposite, and they kind of dissolve each other. When you get too much Jupiter and Neptune in a chart, you get mud, water and earth. But with Jupiter and Sagittarius espousing its own versions of truth and belief and philosophy and higher-minded attitudes, squaring Neptune in Pisces, which is all concerned around the more nebulous, the more watery, the more oily, the, the, the vague... And when you put the two together, there's a real dissolution here, a real dissolving of truth. Neptune is dissolving all of Jupiter's high-minded aspirations to find the truth, to be the truth, to live the truth. Jupiter is over-amplifying and exaggerating Neptune's attachments to things like in the environment and spirituality, which is why in this last year we've seen so many different forms of of channeled messages, religious dogma, oh, you name it, it's all out there. It's impossible at this time with Jupiter square Neptune for any person or any collective group to be able to hold to a particular philosophy, truth, belief, dogma and to be able to walk their talk without losing focus. Focus has been in short supply in 2019. And now Jupiter is coming to square Neptune again for the third and final time. And this will happen precisely on, when is it? Uh, September, the, of course, September the 21st, the day, be, the day or two before equinox. That is when Jupiter will pass square to Neptune, both of them at um, the start at the end of 16, the start of 17 degrees of Pisces and Sagittarius. Particularly impacting, incidentally, on those Pisceans born around the um, um, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th of March, and those Sagittarians born around the um, 8th, 9th, 10th of December. but affecting all of us in some shape or form. So over the coming few weeks, as Jupiter approaches its final scare, square, to, scare to Neptune, square to Neptune, we can expect the levels of hype and spin to become extraordinary. We can expect situations to really escalate out of control with people's individuals and collective beliefs becoming ever more self-empowered and dominant, at least in their eyes. Beliefs work for individuals, yes. But if you believe something strong enough, then anything outside that belief can't be true. And this is the root of fundamentalism. I suppose if there's a gateway here, it is that of humour. Jupiter and Sagittarius does bring humour. And the ability to poke fun at ourselves, to find humour in the face of madness, is perhaps one of the strongest traits in humanity. Very few animals on this planet can find humour in a conscious way. I think dolphins do, I think chimpanzees do, and I suspect cats have a great deal of humour, but it's dry. But humans can laugh at themselves. And perhaps humour is the one thing we can find. And it's not laughter in the face of madness because that's that's literally insane that's stupid but to find humor to find wit irony sarcasm just any type of humor i don't really care over the coming few weeks is possibly the single best antidote to the opposite because the opposite of this with jupiter squared neptune it is not so much depression because it's not long enough to be depression it might be short-term despair certainly an element of despondency 
and especially melancholy when you realize that nothing and no one least of all the world is ever going to be as good as we can dream but as I say to clients you're not being asked to be successful you're just being asked to do your best so a collective lowering of aspirations to a more realistic achievable concept is what's being asked here and to take the mickey out of oneself with Jupiter square Neptune over the coming three weeks things are going to get well messy in Britain especially but that's because I'm biased I'm British all over the world it's going to be hype and spin don't buy into it find the humor retreat into yourselves if necessary laugh at yourself laugh at the world and hopefully by the end of September everything's going to have come back down to a more manageable level watch this space catch you later world bye